to be for a web page. It could actually be for an article, right? And then you've got a footer as well for the same article. Um, that just includes the publish date, right? And here, notice we used the time tag for the publish date, another semantic markup element, which I think is super cool. Um, it makes it really easy for people to know that that's the time or where the time goes. Um, next, let's talk about the section element, right? It defines just sections of a page. So if you have a left section, a middle section, and a right section, um, can be definitely used to identify those things. Um, but sometimes it's not always an appropriate thing to use. Um, if we have content that's separate um, from other content on the page, then we want to use the article tag, right? You could also use the aside tag as well, right? Um, so let's say that uh, you're creating a web page that has something to do with your family vacation. Uh, maybe you're going to uh, Pacific Grove, California. That's where some of my family lives. Um, and you want to do a quick little feature on Pacific Grove. Well, instead of using the section element, you'd want to go ahead and use the aside element. So keep things like that in mind. Um, if you want to create a sidebar, once again, use the aside element. Um, if you want to go ahead and wrap and position multiple sections that aren't related to each other, um, if you want to group them, you'd still want to use a div tag, which is super, super helpful. Um, if you want to do something like add a drop shadow or style um, an item, use a div tag as well. It'll make it a little bit easier. You can use an, the um, ID uh, property in order to make sure that you apply the style appropriately. All right, so um, like I had mentioned previously, the H group element simply just groups heading elements. So we have H1 and we have H3 here. You could have all sorts of headers um, all grouped together. Um, here, this one is just sort of the, the H1 element is your main heading. And then this H3 is something we call a subheading. And I'm trying to write it on the screen for you, but it is not working very well. Um, I do actually write like that with an ink pen, too. I know you guys are amazed, but that's how it goes. Um, something that's important to understand about the H group element is that it's really just for structure. It's not going to affect the way that anything appears on the screen. So um, if we went ahead and we took this, and we will in just a second in our demo, um, and we, we went ahead and opened it up in uh, Internet Explorer, we would see that nothing would, uh, would look any different than if we never had the H group element there at all. So, all right, next. The nav element, it's used to organize links that allow users to navigate from one page to another. I know that uh, very rarely do you visit a web page and not have multiple links on a page or multiple pages that you would visit. And so the nav tag is absolutely crucial um, if you're building a web page, right? And finally, uh, just go ahead and we'll revisit the article and aside elements really quickly. Um, I wanted to bring back this visual so that you could see how a side could be laid out in HTML. And then article, you'd have a couple of articles in a section of text um, very easily, right? Um, it's really important that you guys know that the semantic elements they don't change how content appears on the page. That's actually done with CSS. So also, if you want to change the placement of an element, you have to make sure that you're using cascading style sheets. And we'll talk about that in our upcoming modules here. OK, so um, let's take a quick second to go ahead and do a quick demo so that you guys can see all of these things in action. So here we have our semantic demo. I'll just open this up real quickly for you. Um, notice that we've got our, our navigation element that we just saw in a couple slides back. And then here we have an article. Um, the reason why I want you guys to see this page is so that you can understand that, that these elements, they don't just make something appear like this, right? Like this image on the right. There's a lot of extra work that has to go into making a web page appear the way that it does. And so it's super, super important that you don't just make the assumption that these, these semantic elements um, just structure a page and make it appear the way you want it to. Okay. So let's go back. Uh, whoops. 
Go back to Web Matrix here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click my HTML document, launch in the browser, and there we go, right? Everything is just line after line after line. Um, note here that our, our H group element doesn't impact the way that things look on a page at all. Um, looks just the way that it would if it was never there. But I know that those belong as a group. All right. Okay, let's transition. Let's talk about tables and lists really fast, super fast, in fact, okay? All right, so if you're creating a table, you're going to want to use the table tag, another semantic markup, all right? Um, you use a combination of all of these other tags in order to add your rows, your columns, and everything else. Um, use the TR tag to create a table row. That's what TR stands for. You have the TH tag is table header. It's going to create headers. TD tag. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what D means, so if anybody knows, go ahead and uh, definitely, definitely send me an email. Or uh, follow me on Twitter. It's always a good thing to do. Um, next, if you, if you want to style columns in a particular way, you can go ahead and group them together using the call group element. And then, of course, we have um, different ways to mark groups of headers, header rows, footer rows, um, you know, the body, and then also providing a caption. And I'll show you how to use a couple of those things here in just a second. So let's take a look at what this code looks like in a browser. So bear with me as we go back to Web Matrix and open up Table Demo. All right, so note here that I've got a caption. Maybe I'm working on my graduate thesis um, in addition to working three full-time jobs. And I really want to make sure that I'm, I'm keeping track of all the hours that I'm working. Well, here I've got uh, a table with a border. So I'm using the border attribute of one in order to make sure that uh, we outline our table. And then I've just got the first row, which is going to be the header with month and hours. Then I have the second row, which is going to be um, April, which is the month, right? Notice how those match up. Then 100 is the number of hours that I worked. And I've got my third row here for June. So I clearly did a lot of work in April, not very much work in June because it's beautiful and sunny outside, like 80 degrees. And then in July, I've got to buckle back down because, uh, well, it's going to be due in August or something along those lines. Anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, pop that demo into our browser, and you see how that table is formatted there, right? So pretty cool stuff. We've got our caption up top, number of hours worked on thesis. Let me snap that over here. And then we have um, the month and the hours. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but tables can be confusing to work with, so it does, if it does take you a little bit longer to figure out, um, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, it's definitely just sort of harder to read than, than some of the other markup that we use, okay? So, all right, back to the presentation. Um, lists, there are two different types of lists that we could add into our HTML documents. We've got ordered and unordered. Um, ordered lists use the OL tag, and uh, they order items in a list using numbers, right? So it's numerical order. So you check out that example on the right of, of an ordered list of my favorite foods. Um, number one is pizza, and number two is cake. Uh, it can be a little confusing because you're not going to see one and two there. You're going to see LI, which stands for line item, or sorry, list item. Um, but do know that it'll appear as number one and number two. Um, that's not actually my favorite food list. I just thought everybody would be able to relate to it a little bit more. All right, um, next we have an unordered list, okay? Um, UL tag, the UL tag is used to display items in a bulleted list. Um, you know, once again, we add items to that list using the list item tag, the LI tag. And so if I'm visiting Seattle, then I have a to-do list, right? I want to make sure that I visit the Space Needle, and I also have to buy a rain jacket because everybody here thinks it rains. It's 80 degrees outside right now. It's nice, right? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at lists in action in a demo, okay? All right, so let me pull up the list demo. Um, note here, we've got our two different kinds of lists. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and launch here in the browser. And there we go, right? Pizza's number one, cake's number two. My Seattle to-do list. I've got uh, Space Needle, 
buy a rain jacket, no particular order, doesn't matter which one I do it, so therefore I'm going to use bullets. Pretty quick and easy, right? Lists are definitely not too challenging or too confusing. Um, still can be a little tricky though. All right, let's go ahead and transition and take a look at input and forms. Um, a web form is a page that features input fields where users enter data. Um, form input or that data that's supplied by users is uh, sent to a server where it's processed and stored. And uh, you know, we use these forms everything. They're super ubiquitous. They're all over the place. Um, we use them to sign up for newsletters, um, to complete surveys, to make purchases and enter our credit card information. I mean, they legitimately are in almost everything that we do. Um, every single time that we enter in a username, right, our login credentials, we're using a form. Super important, right? Uh, there's a graphic on the right there of a form, just in case you've never seen one before. But if uh, you haven't, you're probably lying to us and yourself, more importantly. All right, so if you want to create a form, guess what? You're going to use the form element, right? There's semantic HTML in action again. Um, we create a form using the form element, and then inside, we're going to nest our input and our label tags, right? The label element is going to display a label for each field. So, you know, in our example that we just saw, we had a field for our first name, and we should probably label it so people know what kind of text needs to go in it. Um, we've got the for attribute here so that we know that the label is for the input tag with the name, first name. So notice how these match up. That's super, super, super important, okay? Um, next, we have our input element here, right? The type is text, which means that people are going to go ahead and type in text. Um, it's just going to be a blank field that doesn't have anything in it. And similarly, we're going to use the same style for our, our last name um, input box and then also our email input box. Notice here, though, that for first name and last name, we've got text and text. And then for, pardon me here. All right, then for our email box, we're gonna use a different type. It's gonna say email. It's for a particular reason, which we'll get at in just a second. Um, so there are a lot of different types of input, right? So we just saw email and we saw text, but you can also, <clears throat> also uh, make the value of type. Uh, you can set it as password right, for passwords, set it as submit to create a submit button. We could set it as radio for a radio button, checkbox for checkboxes, dates for dates, um, like today, which is June 22nd, 2015. And we could also, um, also add it as a, a search field. And the search field is going to be very similar to a text box. Um, people are going to be able to type in text that they want to search for, right? I love semantic HTML. It makes teaching so much easier. All right. There are a couple of other different attributes that we want to be able to use with our input elements. Um, we're going to use the autofocus element or autofocus attribute, the required attribute, and then the placeholder attribute. Okay. Autofocus is going to bring focus to a specific element. So if you have a form on a web page, it's going to highlight it, right? So if you have a, a box here, it's going to go ahead and it's going to highlight it in some kind of blue hue behind it in order to say, start with me, start with me. I want you to go ahead and enter information here. Um, required is going